I'm Scott Slapin of the Slapin Solomon Viola Duo, and I'm here today to talk about rosin. When I was a kid, they just told me to put rosin on the bow every time I took it out of the case. And maybe that's fine advice for a kid, because sometimes if they don't do it every time, you know, they forget about it entirely and soon you don't hear any sound. But most of what I've learned about rosin has come from experiences since then and, and talking with other musicians. The great double bass player Gary Carr advised me not to put rosin on immediately before going out on stage to play because he, was, he says it needs a certain amount of time to even out and I found this to be absolutely true. So I try to um, put rosin on when I know I'll have at least 20 minutes to play alone uh, and then after those 20 minutes I will wipe the strings down just with a, just with a cloth um, so that the excess rosin that tends to stick to the strings is also removed and then, then things are much more even. If I don't do that, I get all these squeaks and extra, extra noises. One of my experiences with rosin um, was when we were in New Orleans, which is a very humid city to start with, and this was an extremely humid day in the summer, even for New Orleans. And Tanya and I were playing outside on the North Shore, right next to Lake Pontchartrain, and it was 20 minutes before the clouds opened up and this, this really heavy tropical rain happened. So this, this was as humid as it could be. And I was actually not able to put enough rosin on my boat to get any sound at all. It was the only time in my life I could not get any sound at all. I would, I would with, use, use as much pressure as I could. Simply no sound came out of the instrument. Um, I was lucky I had a spare bow that had way too much hair in it. It had had a terrible rehair job. And I was able to cover that in, in enough rosin to, to get through the, the performance. Um, but ever since that experience, I've been aware of humidity and how it affects the amount of rosin that you need. Uh, living here in Vermont, uh, which is inland by quite a bit, it's reasonably dry. I can go a week or two without putting any rosin at all sometimes and then one day it will rain like it did today and all of a sudden it becomes apparent that I need rosin and traveling around I've noticed the the relationship between the humidity and the amount of rosin that I need nobody told me this over the years but it's something it's something I found to be true and now you know too Thank you.